In this video, we're going to go over eukaryotic chromosomal organization. We're going to start first by looking at chromosomal proteins. There are many different types of proteins and chromosomes, but there's only one that you need to know from MCAT called histones. Histone proteins are proteins that help to package and organize DNA in eukaryotes. You can see how they work in this diagram. Essentially, DNA wraps around these histone proteins to form structures called nucleosomes. The binding interaction between histone proteins and DNA is an attractive electrostatic interaction, which means it's between positive charges and negative charges. As you recall, DNA has a sugar phosphate backbone that gives DNA a negative charge. That means the histone proteins has to have a positive charge, which is correct. Histone proteins have a lot of basic amino acids with positively charged side chains. All right, so now let's look more at the organization of chromosomes. And on this diagram, you can see all of the different levels of chromosome organization. At the top, we have the basic structure of DNA, the double helix. Below that, you can see what we just discussed, which is the DNA will wrap around clusters of eight histone proteins, often called octomers. When the DNA wraps around the histone proteins, they form the nucleosome. In between nucleosomes, there is some DNA fibers. If you look at this image, you can see that it has this sort of beads on a string structure where the beads are in the nucleosome and the string is the DNA in between the nucleosomes. A more formal name for this beads on a string structure is chromatin fibers. At the next level of organization, you can take these chromatin fibers and you can coil them together to form a denser structure called the 30 nanometer fiber, named for the 30 nanometer diameter of the fiber. With these 30 nanometer fibers, you can further coil them through supercoiling to form chromosomes, which you can see is the final structure. Now, it's important for you to know that the supercoiling of DNA is done by the enzyme topoisomerase. You might recall this name from DNA replication, and that's because it's the same enzyme. In DNA replication, Helicase needs to form the replication fork and unwind DNA. This causes a lot of strain in the DNA from the supercoiling. So topo isomerase will help to relieve the strain. And it makes sense for topo isomerase to be able to both supercoil and remove the supercoils. And that's because enzymes can catalyze both the forward and reverse reactions. All right. So this is how chromosomes are organized in eukaryotes. For prokaryotes, it's a bit simpler, and that's because prokaryotes do not have histone proteins. So as you can see in this diagram, prokaryotes are able to pack their DNA with supercoiling alone. So essentially taking the DNA and forming coils, and then coiling those coils to form these supercoils. All right. So now that we have an understanding of how chromosomes are organized, let's move on to discuss single copy versus repetitive DNA. Single copy DNA is essentially a nucleotide sequence that is unique within a genome. It's not duplicated. There aren't copies in other regions in the genome. Single copy DNA is important because it contains the majority of coding sequences. So these are the sequences that are going to code for the different proteins that a cell is going to express. We also have repetitive DNA. Repetitive DNA are regions of nucleotides where you have the same sequence of nucleotides repeated over and over again. These repetitive DNA sequences are generally non-coding, but they often have important roles in gene expression regulation. So it's not like just because they're non-coding, they're not important for biology. However, since they are non-coding, it is possible for mutations to accumulate in these areas without producing deleterious effects on the organism. And because of this, there is a lot of variability in these non-coding regions, these repetitive DNAs between individuals, 
And that's why forensics testing is often looking at the differences in repetitive DNA between individuals. All right. So next, we need to talk a little bit more about the repetitive DNA. There is some terminology here you need to be familiar with for the exam. Tandem repeats are adjacent repetitions of DNA. And there are a couple types of tandem repeats. There's mini satellites. So these are tandem repeats that are 10 to 60 nucleotides long. So that means the repeating sequence is between 10 to 60 nucleotides and it will repeat many times. Microsatellites are tandem repeats that are less than 10 nucleotides long. And a very good example of this is Huntington disease, where there are three nucleotides, C, A, G, that are repeated over and over again. And since we're talking about Huntington's disease, you can understand that these tandem repeats are important because they can result in diseases. Specifically in the case of Huntington's disease, if there is a small number of these microsatellites, CAG, then the individual will not have Huntington's disease. As these numbers increase, the individual's risk for Huntington's disease starts to increase. And past a certain number of copies, the individual is guaranteed to have Huntington's disease. Okay. So that's single copy DNA as well as repetitive DNA.